from Concord University in Athens, West Virginia. This is Mountain Lion News. Hello and welcome to Mountain Lion News. I'm Kiana Johnson. And I'm Leah Gilpin. There were a few exciting events that took place on campus earlier this week. One of them was Stunt Army. A freestyle sport bike riding exhibition came to Concord and put on a great show. Members of the Athens community, as well as Concord students, came out to watch an unbelievable show. I think it's safe to say that the community thoroughly enjoyed themselves. Let's see what the tricks the audiences were the favorite. Mine was when they were standing up like near the handlebars. Same. Mine was um, when they were wheeling backwards like oppositely. It was cool. I like it. As we enter a new semester at Concord, freshmen and themselves saying goodbye to the comforts of home as they start their academic journey. And older students are saying goodbye to a long-standing part of the campus, Woodell Hall. One person who lived in Woodell for mo almost three years shared his thoughts on the closing of the dormitory. It's actually been pretty difficult to adjust because despite all of its problems, Woodell was uh, <clears throat> my home, home for, for almost three years. After almost 60 years of housing students, Woodell Hall, named after W.S. Hall, has officially closed its doors. Everyone who lived for, worked in Woodell, now is transferred to South Tower or Wilson Hall. Students of Concord University and Athens community residents gathered in the J. Frank Marshall Library earlier this month to learn about our Appalachian heritage, specifically coal mining scrip. Jay Chapman, president of the McDowell County Historical Society, gave Concord University a visit uh, September 5, 2018 to inform anyone interested in Southern West Virginia's mining history and display his strip collection. Attendees were welcomed into the presentation with the opportunity to view several mining artifacts and script coins. Script, otherwise known as token money, was given to the coal industry workers to pay their wages. This was common in the late 19th century to the mid-1900s. Script was the common way of paying company stores to purchase goods such as groceries and clothing. Although script is no longer used, Chapman says the script remains to tell the story. Additional presentations of the Appalachian Heritage Lecture series will follow in the coming months at Concord University. The Social Work Department at Concord University partnered with West Virginia Public Broadcasting and Inside Appalachia for the second opioid symposium, Providing Hope. The two-day event, which was September 4th through the 5th, consisted of workshops, a round table, which is an academic discussion, and a screening of a documentary film, all of which addressed the opioid crisis in West Virginia. For more information on future symposiums, contact Sarah Dalton. When it comes to what's new at the cinema, we turn to MON's in-house movie critic, Cameron White. Cameron? Thanks, Leia. Hello, and welcome to Roles That Move the Soul. Today, I will be reviewing the new shark-based blockbuster, The Meg. The Meg is directed by John Turtletop. It stars Jason Statham as Jonas Taylor, who's a deep-sea rescue diver sent to save a group of divers at the bottom of the Pacific, unintentionally releasing large prehistoric sharks. The movie also stars Ruby Rose, Lee Bingbing, and most importantly in my opinion, Rain Wilson of The Office fame. Wilson is clearly only in the movie for a paycheck, as is the rest of the cast, but his true indifference to what is going on makes him the best part of the movie. The underwater threats are almost constantly a nuisance, but fail to make a memorable impact. 
This movie feels like it wanted to be Jaws meets Independence Day, but fails to have the bite of the former or the corny but compelling action of the latter. For a movie that should easily swim, if not at least float, this one truly is a sinker. The Campus Beautiful was treated to a special screening of alumnus John Hale's The Conduit, a short film that has been making waves across the independent film scene. The film pays homage to 80s and 90s sci-fi creature horror films as the main character, Andrew, finds a way to open another dimension to another world where demonic and evil creatures exist while he is asleep. Now, he must now stay up to encounter these creatures and figure out what is causing them to appear. Andrew focuses on not telling his girlfriend Ashley about the occurrences and is distancing, distancing himself from her as she questions what is going on with Andrew. Hale said some of the inspirations for the film were Jaws, The Gate, and Fright Night. On top of his successful premiere, Hale is also celebrating his regional Emmy for his work on the children's show Abracadabra. That's all for now. This has been Rolls That Move the Soul. I'll be back with another review in two weeks. Reporting from MLN in the studio, I'm Cameron White. Now it's time to take a look at what's going on in Concord Sports. Joining us in the studio is MLN sports correspondent Riley Griffith. Concord football dropped their last contest against Shepard 61-21, bringing the Mountain Lion football record to 1-4 for the season. Coach Price will look to get a win in Concord's homecoming game against Glenville this Saturday. Volleyball downed UVA Wise in three sets this past week, and we'll follow that up by taking on Urbana and Notre Dame on the 4th and 5th respectively. Cross Country hosts the Concord Alumni Meet this Friday at Pipe Stem. Then we'll follow up with a preview of the regional and national course in Pittsburgh on the 20th. Women's soccer split their games this past week, winning in overtime over Charleston with a Pilar Elias goal, then losing 1-0 to Notre Dame College. On the men's side this past week, they lost 1-0 against Charleston and were downed against Notre Dame 5-0. Both teams take on Shepard and Wheeling Jesuit this coming week. Coming up after the break, we have a new Mountain Munchies. And we'll introduce to you a way to make your own fashion. Welcome to another episode of Mountain Munchies. I'm Bay Murphy, and on this episode, we'll be taking a look at a brewery located downtown Princeton, and its owner is a hometown hero and a Concord graduate. The Sophisticated Hound is a brewery slash tavern where you can enjoy home-style crafts in several different unique flavors, so many that it will be hard for you to actually find one you didn't like. The Racer 8 American Stout is one of the most popular on the menu, and not just because it's named after Matt's champion dog racer. This precious pup was rescued by Matt, and with love and careful detail, he turned Denouncer into a Racer 8, racing at Alabama and Florida, that before making it back home to West Virginia. This is, when his, this is when his friends and family told him he should go public with his beer and start a brewery. His love for crafting could only be home, honed in his hometown. That's why it was important for him to open a brewery here in Princeton. He says the people need a place like the Sophisticated Hound to be able to unwind and enjoy a cold one with the friends and family. At first starting with the five gallon system in his basement, but he had a bigger picture in mind. With hard work and dedication, Matt said let the good times roll, or brew in this case, now making over 2,000 gallons of homemade beer a week in which he distributes to the entire state of West Virginia. Along with all the beer you can drink and, food, and great food to indulge in, every Saturday the Sophisticated Hound offers live music. So for all the music lovers, this is a great chance to experience a local band and free performances. So roll over to check out what Mountain Lion News has sniffed out for you. I'm Bay Murphy. Back to you ladies. Now here with her new segment on creating your look is MLN's fashion correspondent, Jasmine Hubbard. Thanks, Leia. Hi, and welcome to So Cute. I'm Jasmine Hubbard, and this is an alternative fashion segment where people share their unique styles with you. 
On this episode, you will be learning about my unique style, Party K. Let's take a look. If someone were to ask me what my style was, I would describe it to them by saying, it's like dressing like a birthday party every day. Basically what that means is pastels, lots of pink, um, maybe some balloon enamel pens, those kind of things. It all really started back in the 10th grade when I was first introduced to alternative Japanese fashion by my sister Abigail. The first fashion I ever learned about was Lolita. And Lolita was fun to dress in. It's my first ever alternative fashion that I actually got. I got this red dress from my parents for my sweet 16 and it was a Lolita dress and I still love it and I still wear it to this day and it was my first ever alternative fashion piece but after a few months I would have to say that my fashion kind of drifted away from Lolita because I realized that the whole structure of it wasn't really me I'm more of a free spirit kind of person I don't really like structure as much as I like, you know, going out and doing what I want. So in the 10th grade, I also discovered this YouTuber. Her name's Pixie Locks, and she's the real reason why I am able to be so true to myself. I mean, I've always been pretty bold in my style choices. I've always not really cared about what others thought about me, but going into a place like high school, and dressing any old way just didn't always get the exact reaction I was hoping for. So being able to watch her videos and truly be comfortable in the fashion that I wore was something that I actually loved. Um, without my sister Abigail, I wouldn't have known about Lolita fashion, wouldn't have known about like things such as anime, or any of that stuff really. In fact, Pixie Lux I only discovered because she used to wear Lolita and she was someone who I was inspired by. And eventually as her fashion changed and evolved, my fashion was changing and evolving. And she was the founder of the fashion that I currently wear, which is Party K. It really had like this celebratory of life kind of vibe to it which I think is the reason why many of her followers, known as Confetti Club members, were really able to connect to her. She's just so personal and loving and open. For those of you out there who think that when you see me, this is a costume, just know that to me, it's not a costume. It's just the way I dress. And this fashion is probably the reason to be honest, the reason I'm even still alive really to this day, being able to just dress authentically me meant the world to me. Next on So Cute, meet Samantha Texahiri, one of the sweetest goths you'll ever know, as she takes us through what her fashion means to her. Thanks for watching. For more videos, check out my YouTube channel at LadyJAY872 or Lady J Short Films. And remember, stay so cute, lovelies. Now back to you. That's all we have time for on this week's MLN News. I'm Kiana Johnson. And I'm Leah Gilpin. We'll see you in two weeks.